Humans have been fighting the summer heat for thousands of years. Ancient Romans ran cool water through the walls of their homes to beat the heat. The Chinese built large, hand-powered room fans. In the years since, people have experimented with everything from importing mountains of snow to freezing their underwear. In the 1840s, Florida doctor John Gorey developed a device that used ice to cool hospital rooms. And in 1881, doctors chilled President Garfield's sick room with an unwieldy machine that blew air through sheets soaked in ice water. It cooled the room 20 degrees, but used 500,000 pounds of ice in two months. He died anyway. Things got more efficient after the advent of electricity, which made electric ceiling and oscillating fans possible. Finally, in 1902, engineer Willis Carrier invented an apparatus for treating air that controlled humidity in the printing plant where he worked. It kept the ink from melting off the pages. At the time, businesses lost major money because many factories couldn't operate in the summer heat. The first air conditioners were so large and expensive they were only used in factories. The general public got their first taste of AC in movie theaters. Marketers called it man-made weather. This started an American tradition of going to the movies on hot summer days and paved the way for today's summer blockbusters. The next major public spaces to get AC were the White House and the U.S. Capitol. Before that, lawmakers only worked from November to May. The spread of air conditioning has changed not just how we live, but where we live, allowing millions of people to make their home in Sunbelt hotspots. In 1965, just 10% of American homes were air conditioned. Today, that number is closer to 90%. Getting elected president is an expensive business. Campaign costs add up. There are advertisements to make, travel expenses, convention costs, even bumper stickers. But where does all this money come from?